I'm sure you're lying. <laughs> uh, folks, it's Tuesday night. Welcome aboard. You know what this is. This is our staff. fish game. Hey, that's one. We're keeping track. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this is our stab at a talk show. Uh, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to buy our crap, our fine quality merchandise, i.e., I, I, somewhere I have my mask. Uh, right. Hold on. Hold on. Right, that counts as two because I heard myself in the background saying, yeah, yeah. Odd Fish game. game. Sorry, running into some technical difficulties. <laughs> so, but God damn it. Oh, oh, there it is again. That's four. <laughs> as you can tell, we're a professional out. We are, we are professional. When you have outfit. sponsors like Odd Jesus Fish Christ. Games. <laughs> What in the hell are you doing? <laughs> no idea. Well, hold on a second. Okay, hey, uh, David, when you're done watching the show, let us know how we did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, God. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Hi, folks. Hold on, let me do a test real fast. Sure. Odd fish games, 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 odd fish games. You can't get up to 87 <laughs> doing that. And now, what What the hell's he doing? <laughs> wow. Oh, man. <laughs> Sorry. In the dark of the night, I like hey, to ponder things. Hey, David, how's it going? Are you vampiric? <laughs> I am. Uh, it'll make for an interesting introduction. Uh, follow yeah. us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our archive if you want to buy our crap whatever uh if you want to join us on discord uh it's down there uh thanks of course to i, I kyle might have mentioned this oddfishgames.com uh, <laughs> sponsoring it. us uh and then uh, most importantly if you want a seat on this show or one of our one shots uh get a hold of us m hobo inc uh either gmail or twitter uh we'll see what we can do to get you on here and uh you can be just as technologically savvy as david <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, I'm first, let's get to the <laughs> introductions tonight. You know what? We'll change it up. David, who are you? <laughs> I'm obviously the producer of the show. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Don't be smirch Carrie's name. Like I'm that. kidding. I'm kidding. No, I'm talking about, yay, it's my turn to screw things up. <laughs> uh, you wanted the spit <laughs> dice. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Hi, I'm David. Uh, I'm. Uh, yeah, a guest on Murder Hub. <laughs> so when I'm not screwing up the works, uh, yeah, I'm usually playing on the Thursday game, uh, the cacophony games. So not anymore. Not if you're going to be yanking our technological chain. Yes, it's kind of one. Next up is Carol. Carol, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, everyone. My name's Carol. I'm a commission mini painter, longtime gamer, sometime GM. Uh, what one time yeah uh, no no one I, time i have gm'd other places other than the more show. important than us got it check wow not say i feel that. a little hurt now they're not more important it's just that i've been playing a really long she time likes them better i ran <laughs> for the last 30 years but carol do they have sponsors like dirty dog dice dirty I dog going dice. Somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, same difference <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> and last but not least is Kyle. Uh, hi, I am Kyle, but I'm here to tell you about something far more important than myself. That is myself. Uh, <laughs> I'm Kyle. I uh, DM the second most frequent on the show. Yeah. It works. Dark show. We're going to the dark web, boys. That's it. Okay. But let me get my stick with a screw on the... Ah, there we go. Dad, talk about the... Stick <laughs> Never with mind. a screw on the end of it. Ooh, oh, sorry. We are doing dark. Oh, okay, we're doing dark. Got it. People want to see oh, this. Son of a, this, oh, this, come this, on. this is the moneymaker right here. This is the that seduction. Is the money maker. This <laughs> is the charm. Uh, uh, excuse me? Uh, who, who got the uh, sponsor? No, you're <laughs> keeping the sponsor. Yeah. They, they, oh, love, okay. they love how you are repetitious with oddfishgames.com. Oh, also, not with dirty dog scene. dice. Why did you not? Uh, she's okay, gonna, she's Carrie, gonna give you poop Carrie, dice. Why did you not go with dirty dog dice and go with all illiterate? Oh no, pirate dog dice is better because everything's better. Dirty with dog dice, folks. Pirate every once in a while, we have a talk show where we okay, discuss, guys. Uh, <laughs> okay, here's the thing. 
What do you love more, a pirate dog or a dirty dog? A dirty dog. Pirate dog. Love pirate you. dog. Pirate dog. You can dress your dirty dog like a pirate, but when you rescue your dirty dog from the gutter, he loves you for life and oh. tastes delicious afterwards. <laughs> it's all wow. that tenderizing on the street from getting kicked what? around as puppies. What? What? Wow. Show, t- show wow. took a really dark turn, wait, 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 even wait, wait, without wait. David's assistance. Dark turn. <laughs> God, I'm never gonna live this down, folks. Wow. <laughs> Uh, no, I'd ever. like to say that I've said a lot of horrible things on this and many other shows, but it was the dog kicking that really got me down. <laughs> fair. Fair. Hey, fair is fair. Hey, Frank, it's 8.05, and do you feel like you've already lost control of the yeah. show? Oh, he I'm has. 8.06, yeah. Thanks to David. <laughs> David sent us all spiraling into the gutter. <laughs> uh, folks, obviously, uh, this is just a pile of weirdness, but it will get better. Uh, if you've never seen us before, first we're going to go ahead and tell you about our games last week, and next we're going to get to our main topic, which this week is <gasps> Ranger Class. Uh, so uh, we're going to go ahead and start with David. Uh, as he pointed out, he is on the Thursday show until this little debacle. Uh, David, <laughs> tell us about episode 123, The Chapel of Guest, please. Okay, The <laughs> Chapel of Guest. Uh, Chapel of Guest was our Thursday night episode of Cacophony. Um, <coughs> it was starring Carrie <laughs> as Camille, me as Sadar. And we had Caitlin as a guest, and she was Daphne of everything because everything was g- 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 ghost oriented. So basically, it starts off we we get a we get a we're in the office with our guildmaster from Unto These Nuts, great name, um, and uh, there's a loud banging on the door. A frantic clerk <laughs> walks in says we got to help them. So we trek our way over to the chapel of guests. They seem to have a pesky poltergeist problem. <laughs> so the three intrepid heroes uh, get set to ghost busting that episode. <laughs> so, bottom, 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 bottom. Anyway. With so, a lesser soundtrack. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we get locked inside the chapel, you know. Frank didn't say we were locked in. Chances are we were probably locked in. You were locked in. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we actually see the poltergeist. Uh, unfortunately, we had to use a little familiar trickery to try to try to actually see it, and all that got snafu'd when Camille panics and casts fog cloud. Yeah. And then, she didn't panic. <laughs> no, she just loves to do it. That's her shtick. That, so, that, that is, that is I was her giving her the benefit of the doubt. So we just know she likes chaos. So just right on out there. Anyway, so the fog cloud ends up having some kind of, you know, ending up with some, you know, Zadar grabby handness. He had some. Uh, trying to find his way out of the, the fog cloud and ends up... Um, finding Daphne instead. Uh, but as they find their way out of it, uh, the poltergeist disappears. So we discover that there are stairways leading down through the chapel. We go through, uh, we go down the stairs, we find that there's underground catacombs underneath the, the, um, the chapel. Uh, I say catacombs, but more, it's more like a tomb. Uh, so as we explore the tomb, uh, and we make our way to the landing, what we see is uh, a cloud. And uh, basically it turns out it's uh, the poltergeist. And uh, there is a dead clerk on the floor, uh, a book being burned. Turned out the book was some kind of Necronomicon, uh, probably summoned the Copyright infringement notwithstanding. Yeah. <laughs> Is it trademarked, ne- Necronomicon? Probably not. I think it's an old term. Yeah. But I if Bruce Campbell's too. watching, he, he he's more than welcome to be on the show. Yeah, he's welcome but to come on the show. 
And it's yeah, but it's also been used for Call of Cthulhu too. So you know. nobody yeah. plays that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's when the battle ensues with the poltergeist and on uh, with uh, uh, Zdar getting knocked down uh, pretty close to death. Uh, that the first time uh, we 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 managed to uh, excise the the poltergeist we kill it um we explore the tombs further we find that there's a burial chamber with several caskets daphne takes it upon herself to start playing casket jenga (laughs) start stacking the caskets not that they were supposed to represent you know each casket was uh mirrored by a fresco on the wall before (laughs) above the caskets through chaos so as soon as she's finished with that, we explore the other end. Uh, again, another another two more caskets, but we just explore it. We don't we don't touch it that time. Then we notice a mosaic. Mosaic has a t- has tiles missing. So of course Zadar, you know, picks up the the tiles. Mage hand Frank, because uh, I've learned my lesson, <laughs> and. Uh, on inserting the the last missing mosaic tile, uh, a secret passage opens up, and we go down uh, into this, and it's another another tomb, but this one is uh, actually the tomb of Guest, I, isn't that what we first first archdeacon of Guest? The first first archdeacon of Guest. Uh, turns out, after exploring the sarcophagus and all that, there was darkness in a corner. Turns out to be a black pudding. So Dara almost dies <laughs> for the second time. One hit point, folks. One freaking hit point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so anyway, uh, defeat the black pudding. There's loot. We, we end up getting some scrolls. Uh, we hear <laughs> water rushing beneath the tomb itself. We find a loose uh, flooring. We pull it up. There's another cavern underneath. So... <laughs> So we managed to find our way down inside this cavern. Uh, uh, Zodar sticks the landing going down on a rope. Carrie, not so much. <laughs> so <laughs> Camille just, yeah, took damage. Anyway. Caitlin did too, didn't she? I think she did too. Yeah. I think she hit it pretty hard. Also. Not a night for the ladies. Mm-hmm. She She's a well. guest though, so no one really cares. <laughs> yeah, nobody gives a shit if a guest dies. There hey, Carol, you going to play again? <laughs> time, so. <laughs> I don't know. I would love to play again, but you know. Here we go. Hey, hey, shut we up. Go. You're interrupted, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> fish games. Odd <laughs> fish games. Yes. Anyway, we... Um, we explored this final uh, cave. It looks like that there's no other way out except through the rope of what we that we uh, through the opening that we came from. And yeah, that didn't go well. So anyway, it's kind of like we're trapped in there. Um, one of the things that we find inside this cavern is uh, a primitive urn that's been sealed with. <laughs> so instead of you know, being safe, Zadar just freaking opens it. So we open it, but just as we're opening it, we're looking on the inside and see what's in it. Uh, we hear a tapping. And then the wall gives way and we're blinded by the light outside. A familiar figure, studious, you know, from the Grand Academy shows up again. Apparently Mortimer. on sabbatical. Apparently Are you talking sabbatical. about Mortimer J. Sneed? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah. They make champions. So I understand he works at oddfishgames.com. He does now. I think so. He's That's a consultant. Six. Gives so, great advice. So anyway, the urn turned out to be connected to our timey wimey episode. And episode Mortimer's, 100. Yes. Mortimer's yep. true love. And uh, he just wanted certain things inside the urn. Uh, there was a staff inside the urn, halfling size, because I think Mortimer's true love was a halfling. Diminutive at best. Diminutive. And it turns out it is a staff with a canard on it. And if you're not familiar, the canard is yeah our symbol for golden canard. Canard. golden canard. So, and in a nutshell, that was our episode, folks. So. Hey. Yeah. 
You can catch it on YouTube in the archive. Uh, I think it'll be off of Twitch after this show. I don't think there's any technical issues with it whatsoever. I think it's on longer than that, Frank, but... Yeah, yeah. Frank. Yeah. So now, unless it's now by episode. Let's move it's... to Kyle, then. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask him a question. Seriously, because I actually have watched it. Hey, uh, David. Yes. What the heck did you guys keep thinking that the black pudding was was some sort of uh, something that would be affected by holy water or turning undead? It's not undead. It wasn't it's the black just... pudding that 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 I tried that with. I tried it with the poltergeist. Oh, that was uh, the poltergeist. Yeah. My, my... Somebody Dude. didn't watch it very well. No. <laughs> Carol, you can watch it in the archive. <laughs> today, you you tried to holy water the you tried to put holy water on the ooze, and I'm like, oh, well, what? I don't think I did, but I'm sure. And I remember. I barely did. remember doing that show. I don't remember it. <laughs> there was a show. <laughs> tried to turn it and i'm like going what just beat the thing with bludgeoning. well the the thing was camille was gonna use shocking grasp on a black gra- pudding <laughs> and she was down to her last hit points she i mean at rules as written she would have taken acid damage while casting uh it's, shocking grasp it's it's too it's rules a because- is written who plays like the that? The fuck is that? <laughs> no, but, but I, I mean, she would have taken enough damage to to go on. Is it the black pudding so. that heals, or they split into more black pudding? They, they split, split into more. more. That's what I thought. They, they you know, it's funny. He, it, 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 they actually did do something. I think it was electricity, wasn't it? That's mm-hmm. right. Because electricity is what does not shocking grass. I was gonna. Uh, Zadar was gonna no. take a chance. <laughs> The producer points out that she would have uh, died for the party. Something that Zadar yeah, was would about have. She to would have do. killed the party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's a necromancer after all. Zadar was about to chill the the blade of his sword and use it uh, oh, against the black pudding. So press a digitation and chill the sword. And then, uh, I don't know if that would have done it. Yeah, that wouldn't have done shit. Because rules is not. written. Are very rules is written, David. yes. <laughs> oh, it does it does heat or chill things so yeah for a beverage <laughs> hey let's uh let's move on to the other uh show that we did this week it was the campaign uh episode 124 yaddle insertion uh kyle and carol both played in that one who wants to go first well i would love to tell you all about it but i wasn't paying attention i was busy screening the adventure sense on odd fish games reading about all their interesting sense that so really mean. help immerse your players into the world are you digging into the sewage get the sewage pack. no no folks don't get, get, the, sewage. The, sewage. get the sewage don't get the sewage get the you sewage. can taste it in the back of your throat don't get the sewage see that's immersion right there when you that is very up, immersive all that yes. smell <laughs> It really starts smelling like <laughs> it. Was, it reeks. Uh, they did a oh, nice man. job, but that that shit reeks. Get uh, old tomb or old temple. That's not yeah. bad. Yeah, sure. So uh, about the campaign game, which one of you wants to go first? I I don't care. You could go. Oh, first. I gave a good reason why I wasn't paying attention. I don't. Go ahead, Carol. <laughs> Holy shit! What the hell? Okay, so let me try to remember where we were. Right, oh we- my god! Oh, god. Oh, all right, on. all right. Jesus so, Christ! Let's start with this. I'll go ahead and start, Carol. Calm down. Sure. Calm yourself down. <laughs> so, Terry, Huey, sure. and Manise were outside in the cops of trees while uh, uh, the cops are Lucas, in the not Buffalo cops, cops. Yeah. not Buffalo <laughs> cops. <laughs> Luckily, we were managed to stay on our feet while in this copse of trees. So, um, but ah. then Lucas and what's her name, right? Perpetua. Perpetua. Wow. Man, go on, you know go on, go on one episode. Zip. Fuck him. Ah. <laughs> you, you wanted him to start. You're Sorry, dead Blake. to me. <laughs> With oh. Lucas and Perpetua, who are in the city. However, when Lucas awoke. Perpetua did what Perpetua does and disappeared into the crowd to continue her own nefarious path to solving the evil issue. Uh, meanwhile, yeah, <laughs> on the cops of trees, 
uh, Taryn, after yelling at Manise and Dewey all night, being like, hey, what's the matter with you? Why don't you get along? And like, okay, well, we need to get in That the- sounds exactly like her. <laughs> <laughs> that was not all night, and that wasn't even... That the- was all night long. It was like, <laughs> oh, hey, it wasn't. you want some herbs to help with your spiritual healing? Get the fuck out of here! back two episodes man <laughs> all right all right carol did you want to start and tell what went on then yes I was or would you like me to continue interrupt by the way mature audiences only folks odd fish games uh, yeah, so that okay. means she's about to cuss dirty so. dog dice pirate dog pirate dog dice. dice oh my god kyle Jeez. you're getting hey, real dog dice shit, so dice. wonderful that you could polish a turd Wait, no. <laughs> Kyle, these dice I are really made of like chocolate. <laughs> Half a bite. <laughs> I would do it. I would she do has it. the molds for it. You could make chocolate dice. Yeah. yeah. We're never getting through this. Jesus. That's so, just, but the Rangers are slow on, anyway. Carol. <laughs> Nobody gives a so, shit about Rangers. <laughs> so, wait, so, so I want to add one thing that he forgot. The uh, orb, which is the first piece that we need to find of that staff, was left behind, along with the ring with the note that said, give it to Taryn. So, of course, Lucas keeps it for himself, which honestly is fine since Lucas is a frontline fighter as a druid. <laughs> when has he ever been on the front line? Front line. <laughs> <laughs> was, he he been paying was attention, a bear huh? that first episode fighting on the front lines. That's right. And then releasing evil into the world. He's answered Frank. the goddamn door one time. <laughs> Frank, he was absolutely on the front lines when we were fighting the um uh what's the the, the cultists there. there were he cultists? was trampling over them. Uh the uh, let's see, I wrote them down. What's the name of them? Uh, sensual sensual. cultists. Yeah, the sensual cultists. He was in the front lines fighting them. So no, he wasn't. Freaking lootly, he was. After I threw everyone off the cliff and then dived off the cliff myself. Yeah. I don't think that's front lines, if you ask me. But okay. You know what? I think we're all going to have to go to the Murder Hobo Inc. archive to rewatch that show. Actually, I don't <laughs> remember how that hmm. went down because. Because Dewey was dead, so he had to be in the front lines trampling one of them to death. Uh, but that was Google Jerry trampling Dewey while folks. Dewey was dying. What was he? Was yeah, he that's a giant right. Elk? <laughs> he was a giant elk, correct? Yeah. Giant elk, and he could tramp, and he can, if as long as I think they're prone, and he got one prone, he could trample. And I think that I believe that's what he did. But regardless, that was like. What? That was a couple we episodes ago, Carol. Come on, let's go. So this episode, so as you said, we were outside, and Lucas by himself now was inside the city. <sighs> um, so we spent most of the time trying to find a way into the city. Um, and I'm gonna throw this out there because it was it was a question: Why did I wait? So as the three of us went to that tent city, because originally we were thinking about trying to find. Oh, what the hell's the other person? Uh, Sonora. Look, I did write it down. Shake, first. shake, shake, shake Sonora. Sonora. Shake your but body. Sonora right was not. There. We found breakfast, and we had breakfast, and found out Sonora wasn't there, and that was true because Lucas ran into Sonora in the city. Player knowledge, character knowledge. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but you know what? I'm gonna take. I'm gonna. We just gave this guy like 200 gold. Why is he gonna lie and say that? She's not there. If she was, gold. Who gave two hundred gold? I believe you did. That's right. Dewey Dockamel, hero did. of the academy. Dewey was throwing money away <laughs> like like he was at the strip club, man. <laughs> Making it hail, baby. <laughs> cling, 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 cling. So, you get a bruise, and you get a bruise. Everybody gets <sighs> bruises. Oh, okay. who's a Um. Oh wait, no crossovers. Uh, no. So anyways, we tried, so we decided to try to get through the door. Now I'm going to say this to everybody. Cause I told them afterwards, after they said, well, why didn't you just use invisibility spell? Because I like to role play. And if there's a role play opportunity out there where I can try to get through doing it that way and not burning resources, then I will do it. I will try. How'd that I mean, work? Did that work? <laughs> no, I was not supposed no. to know. You were rolling with it, and you actually you said that they were going to bring the captain to the garden to talk. So, 
You know, I got to, I'm playing my character here and that's what she would do. Uh, because, you know, I can make stuff up on the fly too, Carol, and go ahead and weave it into somebody's what? backstory. <laughs> and you know what? And, and I, and I know that, which is why I was thinking that's what you were going to do instead of just saying no. Folks no. at home, I'm Carol's 11th favorite DM. Oh, shut up. You are not. He is a decent DM. You know, he really thinks on the fly. He does. Ninth. As, and, I, <laughs> and I also appreciate the fact he does bring backstories and he and such into the campaign. He does write that stuff in, which is why the character is. You murdered my backstory, you son of a bitch. <laughs> well, you haven't found out. I did. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to find out that probably next time. Uh, so no, he's alive. What, I know. So it. What we ended up doing to get into the city was I burned a fourth level invisibility spell because I <sighs> leveled up and I could swap out a spell. So I swapped out charm person for invisibility and, and I made all of us invisible and we got in that way. Oh, um, uh, how, 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 how'd you guys get in there? We flew. Oh yeah, we flew. Oh, you. Yeah, I know why you want. You know what? I, mean, I won't say it. Ha ha. You go ahead and say it. Well, I didn't Karen watch the episode. Painted the walls. <laughs> they did. You know she what? left a little bit of herself outside the walls you of Yon. Well, actually, technically, that was uh, Manise's bad roll that caused that, not mine. But you know, it did occur to me that, and I, I let it pass that. You know, first of all, I'm not 100% sure if this in mechanics-wise would have worked. And secondly, how the fuck would it be found me, I guess by voice, to pick me up in the first place? Because you didn't move. Yeah. That's true. I did not move. That, that was the important uh, point in that yeah. whole story. You guys move. were not moving. So, <laughs> you know, and then we had, yeah, and then he had to remember where I left off. I mean, and also I could call out to him, too. I mean, I'm not silenced. I'm just invisible. So that's how we get in. I don't, I'm trying to remember everything that happened with Lucas, but I mean, he, I mean, he went. He, Lucas, Lucas really Lucas explored started, a lot of temples is what I recall. Lucas was trying to find the crypts. Now we, now the funniest thing about the, I think this whole thing was, was we knew which crypt we had to go to, but we didn't know the location. We didn't have a map and he didn't know which temple to go to, but he had the map. So we really kind of needed to get back together. And it just, it was one of those things where it worked out. It actually just worked out where we crossed paths. Because um, we came full circle. Yeah, he was, I mean, Frank was keeping <clears throat> track of where we were on the, where we were saying we were going on the map. And, and we actually did cross paths and we made perception checks, saw each other. So we are all back together. And right now we are headed for the correct temple or the shrine, which is the, what the I wrote that down too. See so if I can read my writing. Icus. Yep, the shrine of Icus, which is by the docks. One of us is paying attention, at least. Uh, I, I unfortunately, it's not me. <laughs> yeah, you guys have also realized that the shrine of Icus is currently under construction because right. of construction mishaps. That's right. I forgot about that. Oh, That's yeah. right. There's like, but. Are those mishaps just in that one place? I thought there were uh, like five or four. Five locations. different mishaps. Right. Are they five different locations or just yes. five different mishaps? Lo five different locations. Five you know, locations. Carol, if you rewatch the episode in the Murder of Week archive, you'll <laughs> yeah. be able to go ahead and take better notes. <laughs> you'll know for sure. You'll also hear about our wonderful sponsor, I knew Pirate Dog Dice. Oh. Oh. oh, I got it right. That's right. Now, Strange Cod Games is doing <laughs> What? I can't count that, you know, if you don't do that the right way. What's oh, he it? got off a, a bunch of what? them before the the, the show right. even started. Uh, okay. there, folks at home, there's a side bet on how many times he can say oddfishgames.com. Yeah, oddfishgames.com. <laughs> I, I think he's way overestimated his ability to say it. No, right now we're oh, you, you. Okay, let's do this right now. And that brings us to the second topic of the evening, the <laughs> class game, advisory game, this game, this on this game, this game, this game, this game. Strangely, I don't think anybody in Murder Hobo Inc. has played a ranger, or am I mistaken? Wrong. You are 
mistaken because I have Andre Jagger. Jagger. Yeah, I can't even try. Jager. I have the uh, the Homer and Goblin Do Clan Ranger. <clears throat> okay, so nobody's played a real Ranger, you know, no. like Second E, you know, when uh, when real D and Ders played. Cool. Yeah, that's right. Uh, oh, the the, the Ranger. So my first character was a ranger in second ed. So yes, I have played a real ranger. So Carol will go ahead and steal my thunder. Uh, the ranger was my primary character in 2E. Uh, as for 5E, uh, I have not had the opportunity to play a ranger yet. Uh, played a bard. Uh, played Hedwood Harry the fighter, uh, perhaps one of my favorite. Greatest and, character. And, and played uh, Famunda these nuts as a bard. Uh, but I digress. Uh, folks, as we all know, uh, 5e is replete with archetypes, and the ranger is no stranger to these things. You got the hunter, the beastmaster, uh, the watcher on high, the Jesus Christ superstar, the uh, man of La Mancha. Uh, I, those might be UA non sanctioned ones. We'll get to those a little bit later. Uh, the nice thing, in my opinion, uh, is that there are a lot of things that the ranger gets that some of the other classes don't get and some of the things that they do, but they get to borrow from it. Uh, but this show is never about me because as Kyle will be the first to tell you, I don't know games. what the hell I'm talking oh. about. When well, it comes I'm to sorry. Play. I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> <laughs> what are we up to? 10. I'm not counting. Oh, all it's more ten. than 10. I'm not counting all the repetitive rep- that's counted as so one. if i silence him i'm gonna win at 12 uh, <laughs> odd fish games odd fish games no, see, that's, <laughs> i'm gonna count that as one we're gonna go ahead and start yeah, with carol uh-huh. since apparently she's played a ranger it, it 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 entranced me it thrilled me it kept my attention so much i forgot that she would played that character so carol yeah. tell us about your ranger I've played her twice, so you know it's it's no big deal. Very uh, memorable, both times. <laughs> well, well, once was in the um, when we were in the swamp. That was that was with uh, all the um, Dukes of Hazard reference. Oh yeah, that was a good one. That, that was a good show. That was her. So when I made that character, I have been binging uh, Grimm, and I was like, you know, it'd be really cool to play that sort of concept of a you know of a monster hunter so that's what i went with you actually did put that in the list but i went with a month the monster hunter archetype monster. because because Herman you know, they, monster <laughs> and i will say dun, this dun, 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 dun. i'm trying to remember okay so one of my favorite things so of course i like to roll more dice and get more you know higher higher numbers better gamer <laughs> not really but who doesn't if any gamer says they don't like higher numbers i don't i don't head wound harry is is not the pinnacle of success <laughs> <laughs> although tara although when tara and i like to be clever more clever than that but a and lot a of joke times, teller <laughs> shut up it's not a joke. my favorite wow. thing is probably slayer's prey which you, it's, I, I have to cheat and read up on it because I said I've only played the character twice and half the time I probably forget the friggin' thing. But basically you get an extra D6 damage on your, uh, for just designating one as your prey. <clears throat> um, you have 10 or whatever, what else you get with this? I only have the low level things. Um, yeah, you, do. you actually also can learn, you also, maybe this hunter overall, because you get hunter sense. Which means you get to you look you can look at a creature and you can determine what, you know some of their attributes. Let's see if they have any damage immunities, resistance, or vulnerabilities, which everybody knows can be super helpful. Uh, and of course, like rangers, rangers, you do get some minor spell casting abilities as well, which I think makes them pretty versatile. Um, and rangers are not just your you know. They're not just uh, Druzadorans out there or, or uh, just archers. You know, I made mine as a bit of a brute. Like I said, I was going off the, going off the show and, and the way I really like the, the way that character operated, meaning the lead character. So I made mine more of a brute. Um, I can't remember if I want one weapon or two, but 
It is. It's a fun class. It's a fun question. I, my husband actually plays one too uh, on our suspended sadly Tuesday night game. Thank you, COVID. Although he actually went and he found another version. I think the version, I think there's, there's a, I can't remember what version it is. It's not in the player's handbook. It's in. UA. Uh, what's that? UA. Revised Ranger. Is yes, that's what it is. It's the revised ranger, and it's oh, it's really good. Um, oh my god, like he basically, if we're ever like, we're never we can never get lost in the woods because that's his main terrain. You pick a type oh, of shit. <laughs> no, like literally, his like the DC, you know, the DC for the checks was less than his minimum. Because it's, he, of course, he put, you know, he's, he's survival, survival, survival. There's always a one. Uh, skills do not always fail on a one. And you cannot fit. Oh, rules is written, <laughs> bullshit. Oh, well, too bad. That's the way it is. And that's it. We do, we do use that rule. It's based on the total of your skill, not, uh, not ones being auto failures and 20s being auto successes. Because let's face it, and we've had this discussion on the show. That sometimes your character, if the knowledge should be beyond you. So even a nat 20 will not give you the knowledge. You don't know. It's just beyond you. Not on checks. Nothing is beyond yeah. me. Nothing. Oh, or, except for anything you have to remember. That's all beyond you. Hey, you know what so I that... do remember? Odd Fish Games. Nice. <laughs> Kyle, tell us about your Do Clan <laughs> Ranger. Oh, the Duke Clan Ranger was a revised Ranger that, uh, um, so back before the Cavalier was created for, for the fighter class, I was like, I want to be a mounted fighter. And I said, Duke Clan Goblin, you got to get yourself a Puma and a saddle because you're going to ride that thing in the battle. That's right. You were uh, that, that okay. ranger uh, in the tower, weren't you? The ranger in the tower. God, I hate that guy. <laughs> it was great. Guys, yeah, if you play a small character and you want to be a beast master ranger, you are a mounted monster, whether you get like a little monkey or something like that, and you can ride an ape into battle. It's amazing. Oh, that would be amazing. No, right? it wasn't because he rode it right up the fucking tower. And That's me. right, because a puma has climb speed. That is so amazing. <laughs> no, no, I don't care. If like, uh, how high is that window? That yeah, was, okay, Charlie can make it. Let's go. Oh, wait. Ooh. I okay. said sour grapes on Frank's in Frank's direction. Yep, I agree. You fucked him over good. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, David, what do you think? Uh, have you played the Ranger class? I don't think you played it in uh, Murder Hobo, but have you played it outside? I have, actually. And <clears throat> your thoughts? Um, yeah, my second episode, <laughs> I played uh, a Ranger, uh, a, a Fearbog uh, Ranger by Swarm the name Keeper? of... Yeah, Swarm Keeper. That's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle was in that episode. So. That was me, <laughs> Caitlin, you, and... That was it. it was just oh, that was it. Yeah. That I was wasn't. Caitlin's first episode. I decided to be Mama Udu yes. and just go all murder hobo. And then Caitlin... Mur she out <sighs> she murder out murder hobo. hobo Murdered you. everybody. Out murder hobo. <laughs> Although Mama Udu closed it at the end. It was just yes. like, because of her, we're all evil now. <laughs> so... What was that episode about? Uh, we had to recover an artifact. There was another party out trying to recover it too. So we were like the, I don't know, the Patsies or something like that. It was crazy. Didn't you, uh, to do and Talala. <clears throat> you guys tried, didn't you guys decide to keep the artifact for yourselves? And it uh, no, we gave it to the evil god to oh, get that's evil powers. Right. That's right. All right, we'll talk about the same I do rem I watched it. I did I do sort of remember it. But a little anyway. bit of trivia. This is our one hundred and ninety eighth show, talk show and games. To be fair, nice. we should really split the categories <laughs> up between between the roles, cacophony, campaign, and you know, actual one shots. You should split it four ways, like an odd fish. You know, 
games. Nice. I, th- I think I just lost that one. Okay, keep going uh, with your Furbog Ranger, David. Yeah, uh, he was the Swarm Keeper. Um, the the good thing about the Swarm Keeper is uh, uh, you control your swarm instead of a uh, uh, another creature. And uh, with this magic, I mean, you can, of course you get additional spells like Fairy Fire, Web, you know, pretty much anything in insectoid. I will neighbors. say they really did a good job, and I'm sorry to interrupt you for a no. second, uh, but right. talking about, you know, the first two rangers, the hunter and the beastmaster, and then them coming up with the revised ranger and then deciding, no, we're not going to admit we're wrong. Yeah. We'll make better subclasses for the ranger. Right. <laughs> You're and right. So that goes on to your thing about having this fun insect filled. Yeah, uh, it's basically balance. an insect themed ranger and uh it it was cool i mean it served its purpose for for that episode um the mechanics were were really good i mean uh, i enjoyed it i hope it's ua so i hope it becomes uh it turns up in a source book but um uh rangers in general it's just like ever since i was a kid and i saw the D &D cartoon man hank the ranger I wanted to create a character like Hank the Ranger. So I saw that bow, he'd pull it back and, you know, the lightning would come out of the bow. Yeah. I'm never giving you that, period. Never. <laughs> you know, I'm surprised they have not made a legendary item just as a, as a shout out to the cartoon, you know, Hank's, you know. Legendary well, bow or something like that. Bobby's Club. They need to make Bobby's Club. An that too. What about the hat? Which is the hat? We'll that is the called hat. the deck of many things. Hat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's a hat of one. That's Presto's hat. Yeah, he got it. He got it from Merlin. It's a volute hat. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it totally is. Yeah, but anyway, since since that, then you know, uh, the first time I started playing D and D, that's three weeks uh, ago. No, I'm talking about when I was a kid. I mean, we're oh. talking 12 years old. I was oh, back uh, in that awkward odd fish games type of year. Yeah, that aqu- that was a good one. I don't even one. think they were even a thought. So <laughs> this is back in the 80s, man, with the Satanic Panic, uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. So, See, Kyle, you're the young one to die. Mm-hmm. I am. Three of us remember the Satanic Panic. Yep. Oh yeah. And some of us was born during the Satanic. I wasn't one of those people, Bo. No. I could have been. I was. And folks, if you want to see what we're talking about, try to look up the movie Mazes and Monsters. Stars Tom Hanks. So there you go. It, it is worst role since Bosom Buddies. Oh yeah. Whoa. Hashtag, whoa, whoa, whoa. hashtag Tom Hanks. <laughs> But anyway, I mean, since then I was a kid, uh, saw and read, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings, uh, Legolas, you know, every kid wanted to be Legolas, you know. So. Gimli. Elf? No. <laughs> no. Gimli. Oh, Gimli, come on. baby. He oh, can well. drink more. I mean, and me, you... it was The elephant Legolas. counts as one. The <laughs> elephant counts as one. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> So anyway, that was my my first experience with uh, playing a ranger. It was just basically, you know, uh, what edition was around 1982? Uh, was it advanced? That was AD&D. Yeah. 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 So. Still have my first player's handbook. Nice. Still, still have my brother's stolen uh, handbook. He probably doesn't know I have it, but I've got it. Do you have a red box set? Yep. Yeah, I had the red box set. Yeah, red box set. I it's had grenadier cool. models too. And wow. I still have them. So wow. while their molds burned, uh, who knows? The pro- I may have the producer make those molds. You oh, that's cool. but I, I don't think they'd come out very well. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. You might. Yeah, You've got no. the pressure. You box, know what, so. though? If anyone could pull out those molds, I'm sure it's Pirate Dog Dice. Nice there you go. Go. That's a good one. You know what? I was going to. She's say. not writing that one down, though. Hey, hey, Frank, it's entirely possible because I know people who will mold parts for like, um, they'll take molds and parts for like uh, Games Workshop stuff so that they can customize their armies. You know, they make other arms and things like that so they can further customize their armies. 
Well, I'm leaving them in the attic where the extreme heat will probably preserve the fine detail. Uh, yeah, by they sure will. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The resin that they made those things out of back then, it was pretty, pretty. The metal that was and lead. Cancerous. Oh, it that was, was lead. lead. I have that was lead. lead oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I have some, I know I have some of those kicking around here too, but it's like. No, I think they may they could be all right actually if you go look at them. Oh, they are not in the attic. <laughs> I would never do, I would never do that to them. Um, yeah. But so, let's uh you know what uh with our little attributes of uh classes, one of the things we almost rarely never get to uh to to expound on it fully is the scenario potential for each class. And I I'm glad we're doing the ranger tonight oh. because you know uh, they can cast spells. They can track shit. They can do big damage. Whoopie shit. Uh, in the old school D&D, you used to only have three rangers per party. No more. No le Or you could always do less, but you could never have more than three. And they always had to be at least good. Chaotic, lawful, or neutral. Mm -hmm. So, uh, fortunately, uh, along with all the other fine decisions that uh, Wizards of the Coast have done, like Mike Merkel's, uh, you know, they pitch that bullshit. It's like having a, a bad paladin. Uh, but let's go ahead and discuss what if you had a whole party of rangers? Uh, oh and I'm going to make it difficult for our panel here. Oh, God. Your urban rangers. Oh, bounty hunter. Duh. Okay. Yeah. So you're obviously taking down a big fish. Danny the whale, um, who's an... Uh, I'll be honest, I said big fish without even thinking odd fish games, <laughs> and I am so disappointed that I didn't come up with some man. odd fish games for the big fish. That is two, Carol, if you don't count them as two. I got it. No, I, that's, that's, no, that's not repetition. That's, uh -huh. that's No, repetition should count, at least for the very beginning. Yeah. Well, you know, you know what their uh, symbol is, that fish? Uh, if you watch the Sunday campaign, you notice that the captain of the Harlot is uh, Admiral Akbar looking dude. Ooh. That's a crap. There we go. Okay, so go ahead with your bounty hunter concept. Yeah, so you just go with the bounty hunter who, uh, I don't know, man. Cliche. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's obviously a cliche, but I mean, honestly, when you're running a a one shot where everyone is the same exact class. I absolutely say hit those tropes and him as fucking hard as you can. <laughs> uh, so get green arrow in there, get a huntress and your other fellows. Robin hood, Robin mm -hmm. hood. Absolutely. And Legolas. yeah. Aragon, screw Legolas. <laughs> Legolas was an elf. <laughs> Nobody gives a shit about elves. Exactly. <laughs> Throw in a dwarf ranger for the fun of it. There um, you go. You know what? Honestly, Carol, you stole the monster slayer. My personal favorite is a, a gnome monster slayer who just uses worrying, gizzing mechanics to kill monsters. Oh, that's a cool idea. I love him. His name that's is Gidget. Um, one of the ideas that I would have for a ranger for that scenario, uh, I created a character, a ranger. I got like 36 of them, folks. Uh, I, 36 a, rangers? That seems like an excessive amount of rangers. Yeah, it's an excessive amount. No, I'm but talking But it's the characters. 37th one. That, one yeah, yeah that, 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 that's that what I really like. Yeah. <laughs> Just think, he's a nautical-themed ranger. He's an there odd we go. fish. Shoots life squids out of it. Yeah. Anyway. Check it, Harpoons. Check it, Harpoons. There we, Harpoons. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Oh my God, folks! But uh, anyway, it's a it's a gloom stalker, and uh, I think you know, kind of taking it uh, a gloom stalker out of its element from from the underdark and putting it in an urban environment would work. Um, the other thing that I made the the theme that I went with with creating the character is it's a gloom stalker, but it's a shatter uh, shatter Kai from the Shadowfell. And the thing about the Raven Queen is she wants memories and she sends the Shadar Kai out to steal memories a lot of times. So that's basically what he's hunting for, you know, things of significance and, and stuff like that. So I really think that would do well and probably could multi-class it with uh, a rogue and you could probably get some really good results, results with that. 
I like that idea. Carol, what's your idea? All right. Well, no, thank God for giving me time to think of, uh, think about it. Normally I do it for Kyle because he doesn't pay attention. And I hate repeating <laughs> Sorry, the what? question. What was the question? Uh, it was what kind of fish has games? Odd. Fish there games. you go. Yeah. yeah. Up and up and now. Come on. 20. We're, we're getting, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. All, All right. We're cutting it there. <laughs> To be fair, rest. she's cheating and not counting every instance I say <laughs> odd fish games. Actually, it's if you wanted to have rules, you should have announced it before <laughs> we started the stream, Carol. Odd yeah, fish Carol, games, odd fish games, odd fish games, odd fish games. Well, repeating is cheating. All right, so you want to know what I had in mind? I had in mind, so I'm thinking uh, a rescue mission. Um, somebody, either a child, I haven't figured out. Obviously. Timmy fell down the well. No, not that. Not so much. I'm thinking like a kidnapping where they've got the where they've got the kidnap victim in like a cabin that's called a short distance away, still close to the city, but like on the outskirts. It's the shitter. And, <laughs> what's that? It's the shitter. Ranger Team Five. <laughs> <laughs> Ranger Team Five. I mean, with their ability to track and and yeah. It, it, yeah, I think that would work pretty well. Mm. <laughs> Something doesn't smell right in the shitter. Shitter, <laughs> <laughs> it would be in like I, I said, like a cabin, cabin in the woods. There you go. Yeah, nothing bad ever happens, happens in, a in a cabin in the, in the woods. woods. Yeah, it's yeah. like being in a copse of trees outside of town. Nothing bad ever happens. Hey. Oh, and FYI, just so you guys know. There were never any fucking bandits back up. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. Kyle <laughs> threw that out there. And made that was great that stricken. everyone started doing that. It was great. <laughs> Maybe second, totally second guess myself, even though I really didn't think there was. And I'm like, but Frank totally would do something like that. Guys, and that, and they in the party. party. Their, encounters, uh, that, their encounters everywhere. You know, we never even did the zany part. Uh, but yeah, that's what I would do. I would have it be a rescue mission for somebody who's kidnapped and outside the. Who knows? Maybe that'll show up, and it, maybe that'll be the next thing I run. Okay. Last question. Uh, Uno Ranger, give me the concept and the setting. All right, here we go. It's a single ranger who has to escort a group of midgets across <laughs> a long distance. Coercing them on, even as they attempt to eat third and fourth breakfast. I call oh. it Lord of the Odd Fish Games. Sounds like a winner. <laughs> did you not see that coming, and, Frank? And, and, and do they <laughs> do they go through odor, like in adventure sense? <laughs> I'm sure they end up in a tavern that has some interesting smells. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah that 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 has a vague familiarity with it. We'll go ahead and put that on the. Back. You know what? And I bet you, at the end of the adventure, at least two of those midgets smell like sewage because they clearly haven't been taking showers or baths any time during that adventure. Right. Hot fish games. Nice, David. <laughs> solo ranger. Oh, hold uh, on, just a second, Kyle. What level is your ranger? Oh, uh, 20th level. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, okay. that's right. Well, this is what I'm thinking. You have, uh, like, say, eight, nine death knights who are trying to kill these midgets. That makes sense. Yeah. No, Maybe I like ethereal weaponry, possibly. Yeah, Ooh, possibly. Interesting. Interesting. Cool helmets, though, right? Yeah. No, God, no! Making some stupid pointy shit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, twenty level. Okay, David, you're up. Level, um, setting, and mission. Uh, level probably, probably around uh fourteen. Uh, because I think what you start hitting your capstone abilities, uh, for the class or subclass around around that level, and then um, you know, that way it gives gives you time if you want to multi-class into something else you know you could do that but um i would have to go with my original concept the gloom stalker uh shadar kai working for the raven queen stealing memories or uh perhaps 
hunting aberrations or something like that? I'm thinking abolus. Mm-hmm. Carol. Um, I was thinking, I don't know if I really have a level because you could do this something that's wide open for, it depends on what you throw at your town, but I like the thought of a uh, maybe a solitary ranger who's defending or protecting a town. And there's going to be some threat that they're going to have to deal with by themselves. The because Magnificent One. What's that? <laughs> the Magnificent, magnificent one. one. I mean, it. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't make something that was overwhelmingly, you know, hard for it. And I probably would give, you know, maybe do something in waves, like they get a couple, you know, of bandits or whatever, and then. Originally, my, my original one of my ranger's backstories. That's what she was. She was she, she wanted to grow up to be the defender of a, of her vill- of her town, and and I, I basically I, had, I threw slavers at them. So there were slavery was a thing in this kingdom. So they tried that. That was it. And I'm like, you could do it as almost like a wave type thing, you know. But eventually, you'd have to try to find where the head the head honcho was. And so as for level, I mean, that's, that's tough. It just depends on what you throw at them. Um, because you could do, you could, you could, you could have a lot of variety in that sort of thing. But I guess for funsies, probably, I don't know, anywhere between fifth and 10th level. 30. Have- level 30. No. I, I would go with a first level because I'm a glutton for fucking punishment. Oh, come on. Second level, at least give him a fighting style and a spell. No. First level, he's mapping. He or she is on a mapping mission. So they can find healing herbs, a.k.a. good berries, uh, roaming in the wild. Uh, In between, they can fight a friggin' crocodile, you know, Uh, and a whole lot of sturges. Because there's mm-hmm. nothing like getting pricked constantly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going there, folks. <laughs> Plus, I, I mean, you guys are like, oh, 10, 12, 40, uh, 57th level. How the fuck long are you playing? <laughs> you know, mine could be You said fun. any level, so. Yeah, you I did I, say I, any I, level. I did, yeah. And, you know, honestly, if you want to really fulfill that ranger uh, uh, trope, uh, that is my tropey trope adventure. You really need to be a level twenty character to be any of the characters in the Lord of the Rings. If you're going to be in Kyle's adventure, you've got to be a level ten twenty character, <laughs> or I'll kill you. What? No. Actually, no. Actually, I like at least level three because then at least you're picking the archetype. Sure. You're picking the flavor of what. It doesn't matter what class either. Three is where you pick the flavor of the class you want to play. And I like. You started I, first, and you live or you die. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be a hero? Fucking prove it. Go to the academy. Meet Mortimer J. Sneed. He's uh, on sabbatical currently. Where at? I don't know. Uh, uh. Some town. Uh, yeah, I. I. You know what? Fuck it. Start at first level at kind of uh, the DCC style. You know, they start at zero level on theirs. Uh, start at first level. Earn sure. your keep. I uh, mean, if you're going to do the cartographer mission, then yeah, I would, would definitely cool. rely yeah. more on the exploration survival aspect than any sort of fighting or anything like that. You know, your ranger is going to get the drop on that crocodile that you want on the fight. And so he's going to get advantage and, well, and really explore that. Cause that's honestly the strength of the Ranger class. I'm sorry to interrupt. It is an exploration pillar that is very rarely and very often just skipped over in most campaign games, which is why yeah. you see the revised Ranger focused more on combat and giving you those plus ones to your favored enemy or something like that. Uh, And so honestly, if you do have a ranger in your group um, or if you want to be a ranger, really push that exploration pillar. If you want to get something out of it that, you know, the book gives you right off the bat. That's my serious conversation. Scott, take a drink. Odd fish games. Carol, mark that down. Uh, that was Thank Kyle's you. final thought. David, what's your final thought? <laughs> but it was a good final thought. Yeah, it was I a have good another, final thought. but go ahead, guys. 
Okay. I'll, I'll come back to you. Uh, Ranger uh, is one of the original uh, um, classes, right, Frank? I think? In AD and D. In AD and D. Uh, Elves were a class in real Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, there there's so many things that you can do with uh, with uh, a ranger. The exploration thing would be good, but also kind of like the lone wolf. I, I don't know. I'm thinking That's sniper, Norris. sniper concept. Yeah, yeah. Ranger working for the military, you know, for the guard. So. Yeah. Carol, final thought? Yeah, I kind of like, I like, I like my ranger. Is, I like something, yeah, the, the thought of them defending a woodland town. So, or, or an explorer, a scout sort of role. Um, it's, and you know, it's funny, I don't play a revised ranger, but I do agree the revisions they made were pretty good. Just that I don't believe they have that in D&D Beyond, and I really like to use it. So, but I really do like my Monster Hunter. That is, that was a lot of fun to play. Um, I like the thought of, I, I, I like the thought of being able to figure out what, you know, the beasties are that I'm facing or what, you know, what they're immune to and such. And some of the things I have to deal with. I actually really like that. And so I thought that that worked pretty well with the whole concept they have for the character. So. Head Wound Harry would tell you that beating anything will eventually garner the results you require. Sure. Uh, Kyle, final thought. Odd fish games. There you go. Uh, folks, this has been Between the Rolls, our stab at a talk show. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive so that you can uh, email Carol and tell her she's wrong about every fact in the game that she thought. She is. She That's true. Yeah. Did not pay attention at all. Uh, you can buy our cool stuff uh, at our shop. You can chat with us on Discord and most importantly, email or tweet us. M Hobo Inc. If you want a spot on here, I mean, let's face it, you couldn't do any worse than me. Do worse. I don't know how to play these fucking characters. I, you know, I'm flying by the seat of my ass here, which makes for. The 11th best DM that Carol will ever okay. <laughs> uh, Folks, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we're pretty sure we're doing Cacophony on Thursday, and Saturday is an open one shot. Uh, if you were trying to get into the game uh, with Adventures in Philbar or Odd Fish Games, uh, their RPG kitten game at Gen Con, Sorry, uh, all four slots are filled up. However, keep an eye on it. Maybe somebody bails and you can jump in. Uh, if not, we're going to try and uh, make sure everybody says we can broadcast them. Uh, Carol thinks some people are camera shy. Uh, I dance naked in the moonlight, so that ain't me. Folks, for all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., oddfishgames.com, Pirate Dog Dice, have a great night. We'll see you on Thursday. Bye, everybody. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,